আছে মনে হচ্ছে আমরা বাংলাদেশের জাতীয় সঙ্গীতে ওকে আমার সোনার বাংলা আই ওয়াজ বোর্ন ইন কুইন্স ইন নিউ ইয়র্ক আই ওয়াজ বোর্ন অন এপ্রিল 9 2012 এন্ড আই গো টু ডেভিসন ইন্টারমিডিয়েট which is basically elementary school and I go to Howard T. Herber, a middle school. What about you? Where were you born? When were you born and what school do you go to? I was born in Bangladesh. Um, I was born on October 13, 2011. And I go to PS16Q in Queens, Corona, which is a uh, gift and talent school. I'm in fifth grade currently. Oh, yes. I used to go uh, to a gifted uh, and talented school until there were no more gifted and talented schools. There are, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, until I moved out of here and I couldn't go to that and gifted and talented. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, talking about, you know, I wanted to know, um, I know you wrote a book, Manish, but then now I figured out you wrote another one, The Love. So I wanted to know more about this book. Oh, so uh, that book is envisioning a world without terrorism. So it was basically like my fantasy world, and now I know that that world probably won't come true as long as there were psychopaths, people who need a mental evaluation, and people who are too lazy to uh, do anything about violence because they want to hold on to power. So uh, back then I was pretty naive, and my father had told me about all these acts of terrorism. So I was going to, uh, I was going here to like rant about this perfect world that uh, I thought less people would die, everybody would be equal, and uh, everybody would be treated the same way regardless of skin color or beliefs. So it's essentially, uh, this book is essentially the embodiment of treat others how you want to be treated, but stretched out over 80 pages. Okay. So, uh, what about your book? I specifically want to know about uh, Diary of a Muslim Kid. So, Diary of a Muslim Kid is my third book. Um, it's about this girl who wears a hijab like me, but at, instead at school she's bullied because of it, and I don't want to enclose the entire thing because that'd be spoiling it away. Yeah, and I want you guys to buy your book. So, so yeah, so, I mean, you too. So, that's why... Um, is it based um, on the Wimpy Kid? No. I, um, it's like, it says Diary of a, but it's not based on that. Okay, so um, now I want to know more about your experiences, because I know you went to India and Africa, all these places, and you're well-respected there, so I want to know more about your experiences there. So uh, when I went to India, I did, had multiple events there, but maybe the three most important were on January 3rd when I um, got the Global Child Prodigy Award from the no Nobel laureate Kailash Sanyarti who won, won the Nobel Peace Prize. He also nominated me unofficially for the Nobel Peace Prize after the event. And then on January 4th, I taught as a visiting professor for a single day at Alumni Royal College which is an autonomous part of Mumbai University. And then on January 6th, I gave a really long speech at the, at the scientific center of the University of Pune, where I addressed things like my book, The Love, and I also addressed uh, terrorism and stuff like that. I tried to address all of us being equal and how we should have love for each other, not hate. And uh, speaking of South Africa, I'm planning to go to somewhere else in Africa soon. Um, in South Africa, I went to Johannesburg, which is where the Da Vinci Institute is located. Uh, and most of my events were at the Da Vinci Institute. I got to meet people uh, from Nukani Education Center and Kumeni Education Center, which are two schools nearby. And I was able to get the perspective of students learning from these schools. And this, you, they use a kind of education system that's different from oh, them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So also, I got to see the Soweto Towers, which are two really tall towers. And I got to see uh, some elephants. I even fed one of them. And 
have. But the most important, I think, would be uh, all of the people I met, and especially uh, the event that I had at the Da Vinci Institute as the laureate for as the laureate for the Da Vinci Institute for 2021, where I gave another really long speech, but this time I winged it because I felt like my script was rough. So everything basically came from my memory. So I basically had no script. I was just speaking off of... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, those are my experiences in India and South Africa. Uh, what were your experiences speaking in the UN? In the UN, um, I went several times. My first time, I believe, was in International uh, Girl Day in 2017. And that's when I went um, an amazing woman. Her name was Mar Mar uh, Manira Mons Maria Monta uh, from Canada. And she was, you know, she, I met her and she was talking to me about, you know, how she thinks that it's really amazing that I came, even though I was, you know, I was only, I think, seven then. Yeah. And yeah, she asked me what school I go to. And then all of a sudden, you know, she was delivering her speech. And then she was like, oh, this girl from uh, Elmhurst, and I live in Elmhurst, Queens. This girl from Queens came here. She's only seven. Her name was Fatihat. I was like, what? Because she mentioned my name, right? And she said, Fatihat, um, raise your hand. So I got up. I raised my hand. Everyone's like, oh my God, she's so little. Did you think, uh, did you feel like you were in a classroom or something raising your hand? Pretty much because there was um, lots of people, a, a little, like, little, more, little more than like 32 kids in a classroom, there were lots of people. Uh, 196. Close enough. And then um, she, she mentioned my name. And then from then on, I wanted to deliver speeches in the UN more. So I think there were multiple times. One event um, was when I remember it was at the end of my first or second, first time when I was delivering a speech. And I, no, I was saying in the UN that my name is Fatiha Ayat, I'm, I was seven then too. Uh, um, Were you reading off a script? No. Oh. I had it in my mind. Oh, okay. That's yeah. usually what I do when I give a speech. <laughs> and because I was like seven then, so um, some of the things came from my mind, some of the things I already knew, and some of the things, you know, my dad helped me fix. And then when I said I'm seven years old, everybody got up and gave me a standing ovation for at least like two minutes. <gasps> and I was like laughing and smiling the entire time. Why don't they do the same thing when I say that I'm 10 in my classroom? When I'm, um, that was when I was seven. So I guess they thought that it's really amazing that, huh. yeah, that a seven year old came. I'm still uh, looking for acceptance in the UN, but I'm going to get there soon. Inshallah. And then um, at the end of the speech, everybody was, you know, clapping and everything. And from then on, I wanted to deliver speeches more in the UN. And uh, there's always been a soft spot in my heart about the climate and about child rights. Mm -hmm. So um, for the next couple of times, I went to deliver speeches about the climate and, you know, issues like that.